welcome to this class on hardware security so we shall in the last few classes we have been discussing about power analysis in today's class we shall be trying to see how we can counter power uh, analysis specifically we shall be talking about a technique which is called as masking which is a very popular strategy to prevent or protect against power attacks and then we shall be discussing about some pitfalls of masking and uh, that will lead us to the introduction of a technique which is called as ti or which is an abbreviation of threshold implementation we shall be trying to look into some of the properties of ti and also see some uh, possible constructions and uh, we'll finally conclude with some experimental evaluations and results on a, a specific case study so to start with how we can counter dpa so as we have seen right dpa or the differential power attacks fundamentally works by exploiting the fact that power consumption depends upon the underlying data so these so there there could be several strategies and the tra strategies can be broadly classified into two approaches the first approach which is essentially uh, very popular is uh, essentially by trying ad hoc design techniques okay which essentially uh, with the objective of making power consumption of the device independent of the underlying data for example right you can actually try to have a detached power supply you can try to use logic styles with data independent power consumption for example you can try to bring in complementary logic uh, uh, logic for example in one case right if you are complementing with x in another circuit you are you are operating on x bar so the idea is that if there is some net which is making a 0 to 1 toggle there is some other net which is making a 1 to 0 toggle uh, likewise right you can also try to br uh, bring in techniques like noise generators inserting random delays but the point is right most of these techniques are not uh, essentially in tune with the normal cad methodologies and also right the methods are often costly more importantly these techniques being ad hoc <coughs> do not guarantee against protections against this kind of attacks so therefore right it may happen that for example if you are talking about a complementary logic although in principle it looks pretty nice because it would try to kind of pretty much make the consumption independent of uh, data by making it constant but then it would also depend upon how you are routing your design inside an ASIC for example if the uh, two circuits like the one which is processing on x and the circuit which is processing on x bar are not routed in a very uniform manner then it may happen to still or it may still lead to uh, you know like un, uh, I would say like it may, it may still lead to non-uniform power consumption which would still be dependent upon the underlying data so therefore right these techniques often are costly and at the same time and you know like get, do not give us an end to end security but more importantly right these methods are not amenable to our CAD methodologies and therefore right the designer in the very first place cannot try to develop or cannot develop his or her design with with suitable countermeasures so this leads us to a second approach which is essentially uh, again with the objective to randomize intermediate results but in this case right you can actually apply this at the algorithm level or at the gate level so therefore pretty much you can implement them at for example the rtl level or the very log level and therefore these methods are more conducive and more uh, desirable from the design point of view so therefore these are again you know like based on the principle that power consumption of the device process processing uh, randomized data is uncorrelated to the actual intermediate result so therefore the idea as we will see is right it basically is uh, built upon this idea that if we can randomize the internal information and essentially process or when we are uh, and do our computations on the randomized information then the power essentially will be dependent upon the randomized data and not on the actual intermediate results so therefore right it would be statistically independent of the actual secret which is being processed so masking is one such technique and it is a very popular technique which has been adopted widely for protecting against power attacks so principle of uh, masking essentially is based upon the fact that no wire stores a value that is correlated to an intermediate result of the algorithm and the process of converting an unmasked digital circuit to a mass version can also be automated and therefore right this method is very popular and de uh, desirable from the CAD perspective so as we will see right in, in this kind of circuits there are two distinct parts the one one part which basically processes on the mask and the second part right which processes on the mask data so the idea is that if you are processing on a data right for example any intermediate value 
you would typically try to kind of split it into two parts. One part which is the mask which is essentially hiding your information and the other part which is the mask data which is essentially nothing but data camouflaged with the mask. Okay. So, we have to basically process both of them in independent fashion and we have to keep in very very careful that no intermediate circuit is combining these two parts because if we combine the mask along with the mask data then the unmasked data is essentially exposed. And therefore, right, we have to do the computation in a manner so that the, uh, the, the actual data does not get opened up during the computation. <coughs> so, let us start with a very simple example of trying to mask a fundamental gate. So, this mask, this is nothing but the AND gate and we would like to mask the AND gate. Okay. So, as we know that in the AND gate, there are two important two inputs like it is an input of A and B and you basically give an output which is say Y or Q. Okay. So, Q is essentially a function of A and B, where A and B are your actual inputs, okay. it could be like single bit values. So, in a, in a normal unmasked data, we would basically do a processing on A and B and therefore, the power consumption since it depends upon A and B would leak information about A and B and that is what we have seen when we are studying about, the DP, about DPA and various versions of that. In a masked counterpart of this or in a masked AND gate, what we will do is that we will basically take A which is a actual data. But rather than processing on A, we will basically mask A with a random value which is MA. Okay. So, MA is my mask. So, now once I take, once I for example, you know like, so one way of masking is by applying a bitwise XOR. So, we take A and we XOR it with MA, where MA is randomly a value for either 0 or 1. So, it is again a 0, 1 random value. When I XOR it, I get AM. So, AM becomes my masked value and MA is called as the mask. Okay. So, essentially right, I mean you have got two parts. So, you have got for example, this part which is essentially your mask which is essentially randomly chosen. Okay. So, it is probably randomly chosen from a 0 or 1 value. On the other hand, right, this part is essentially what we call as the mask data. Okay. So, this is the mask data. So, now once you basically create this mask, likewise you also mask B by using the mask MB and creating the mask value BM. Now, your circuit should process on AM Okay, so, it, uh, it should process on uh, AM, One second. it should process on these two parts, it should process on uh, AM, BM, MA and MB. So, in, in no case right, it should process on A and B. So, the idea is that A and B should never be processed together. Okay. So, so, therefore, right, we will basically kind of convert this function f into another function say f hat, okay, where f hat basically processes on these data, these mask values and you can see I have also used another mask which is essentially what is called as the output mask. Okay. So, the idea is that if you take this output mask, if you take this output mask and the circuit produces a qm, okay, then the final result is obtained by using this equation which is nothing but q. Uh, essentially is, is equal to the XOR of QM and MQ. Okay. But note that in, in, in any case right if you have got a following circuit you will basically suppose the following circuit op operates on Q, but then the subsequent circuit also should be pro 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 processing on QM and MQ. Okay. It, if, I, if I basically take QM and I combine with MQ then again this data gets exposed which is not desirable. Okay. So, that means right in the subsequent circuit I should again have a masked a masked gate which will again process on MQ and QM, but will not combine them. So, therefore, in no case right the mask data and the mask uh, value or the mask should not combine. Okay. So, therefore, the entire thing should be processed in an independent manner or through independent circuits. Okay. So, let us now see for example, how we can mask or how we can convert the AND gate into its masked counterpart in a way like in another way words right we basically would like to see how to write f hat right given or know, knowing that f is nothing but the AND of A and B. Okay. So, that is what we will basically see subsequently. So, so this brings us uh, to this masked computation. So, basically right in a way what we want to do is we want to ca calculate A into B. But remember that there is an output mask say MK, MQ. So, we know that A is nothing but AM XOR with MA and B is nothing but BM XOR with MB okay, and XOR with MQ. So, therefore, right if I break it up then this is essentially pretty much the computation which is done. Okay. So, you can see that it is nothing but we are basically applied a distributive property and basically kind of spread out the computations in this manner. 
So note that in this computation, there is no way, right? Essentially, um, we would basically what we are trying to do is basically we are trying to uh, write the computation so that actual data A and B are not coming into the into play. At the same time, we have to also you know like slightly re restructure this computation because if I implement the circuit as it is as shown here in this particular equation, then it will again lead to a leakage. For example, you can observe that uh, if I you know like combine if I do the computation as it is like this, then this is nothing but B m exhort with m a a m exhort with m a. Okay, and this data is nothing but a. Okay, so therefore, right? Although uh, from the associativity properties, this is essentially I would be uh, you know like uh, I mean this is this is this is correct. But from the security leakage point of view, right? This essentially is not the correct way of doing the computation. So basically, kind of we have to rewrite or we have to kind of implement them in a way so that in no case, right? We have got these kind of situations arising. That is the mask data and the mask. Should not combine together, okay? And this leads us to a specific uh, circuit, which I will explain uh, after this. And uh, basically, right? I mean, the whole objective of doing this masking is that, as we know that there are four inputs, okay? I mean, we know that uh, we we actually know that there are five inputs, okay? But they're taking the output mask also into 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 account. And each of them have got uh, you know like four possible transitions like 0 to 0, 0 to 1, 1 to 0 and 1 to 1. So that there are totally 1024 possible input transitions that can occur. Okay? So if you remember like we previously in one of our classes we discussed about why AND gates leaked. Okay? So where there we saw that the average energy for E of Q equal to 0 and EQ equal to 1 are not equal. Okay? So if you do the same ex exercise for the mask gate, you can essentially do it again considering that the mask gate is a 5 input Boolean function. You can observe that it will turn out that the expected value of the energy required for processing of Q equal to 0 and Q equal to 1 will be identical now. Okay? Showing us that if the gate essentially performs one transition at one time, then there is no leakage. Okay? However, and that essentially means that these are protected against DPA under the assumption that the CMOS gate switch only once in one clock cycle. Okay? But we will come to a you know like a different argument so, so very soon where we will see that if there is something which are called as glitches where essentially uh, you know the output of the gate will swing a multiple number, multiple number of times before re reaching a steady state then still there can be a leakage. Okay? And uh, the design right even after this protection can still be vulnerable against power attacks. Okay? So at this point of time, let us consider that there are no glitch, okay, and let us assume that the, the the gate is switching only once in one clock cycle. Under this assumption, right, we can prove that E of Q equal to zero and Q equal to one will be identical. Exactly in the same way, we prove that it is not identical in the case of a normal AND gate, okay, proving that this circuit essentially should be uh, secured against first order DP attacks. So, so therefore, right, uh, as I said that however, if I want to really achieve that, we have to implement the circuit in a slightly clever way so that the mask data and the mask value or the, I mean the mask value and the mask do not combine together. Okay? So one popular uh, mask implementation is shown in this diagram. This is also called as Trichina's gate. Okay? I mean if you for example, so this is essentially a mask multiplier which has been shown, but in a similar way you can also think of a mask AND gate. Okay? For example, what you can think of is you can replace these multipliers by AND gates. Okay? For example, you can think that pretty much there are like 4 AND gates. Okay? So these are the 4 AND gates which are together and there is an XOR. So we can basically start processing on the inputs like MB and MA. So these are normal AND gates okay? and you can take the output mask which is MQ and uh, you can basically combine it with an XOR. Okay, so this is your XOR. So therefore, uh, this is your uh, output mask MQ, which is coming into XORing the output of MA into MB. Okay, and then again you take these two inputs, which are essentially nothing but uh, uh, a, a MB again. Okay, so this is MB and uh, this is AM. Okay, and likewise, uh, let us complete this part. So you are you have got uh, BM and uh, this part is MA okay, and likewise these two parts are AM and BM. Right? 
So you basically take these two part and you again combine this by an XOR. So there is an XOR here which is uh, written over here. You take these two this part. Uh, so, so you can basically combine this by an XOR. Okay, and again you take an XOR function. Okay, and this is your finally uh, this part right is your QM because QM means because QM is nothing but the XOR of Q and MQ. So, this gate is also called as Trichina's AND gate. Okay. So, uh, so you can observe that uh, the whole uh, the whole way, right? That the, I mean, the, the, the principle of comp of doing this computation is to bring in this MQ, which is completely unrelated to A and B at the very beginning. Okay. So, you basically take two random values like MB, MA. And you exhort it with MQ, right? And you start the computation from this side, actually. Okay. So therefore, right, once you have done this computation, you basically have got AM, AMB, and then you are basically combining them with this part, and then you get this result. You basically combine with this exhort, and then finally you get this result. Okay. So you, so one should be, you know, or one can be tempted. So basically, you can see this is a very skewed circuit. Okay. So a possible temptation could be that I would like to you know like make this process this circuit is a very little bit balanced okay and if you do that right you will always see that you can end up in combining the mass data and the mask value okay and therefore right you, it is really a good exercise to see right that what happens if you try to balance this circuit and it will happen that if you try to balance this circuit then you are combining say a term like you know like for example if I consider a balanced circuit okay so one may you know like by applying the principles of digital logic right for example can end up doing this computation so you know like uh, i may be tempted to say you know like combine these two parts apply an xor okay here and again combine these two parts okay apply an xor here and then i would like to apply an xor here okay so you can see that this basically makes the circuit more balanced and also probably reduces the critical delay of the circuit okay but if you do that right then what you are doing if you observe for example this point okay and if you observe this computation say this is am this is bm and this is bm and this is ma okay so again right this part is nothing but if you take bm common it is the xor of am and ma okay and this part is again where you are exposing a okay so therefore right this is a this is a wrong uh, uh, wrong approach okay so we we cannot actually balance the circuit in this way and therefore, right, finally, I have got a circuit which is unbalanced, but at the same time, right, is essentially secured against first order leakage if there is no glitch in the circuit. Okay. So, you can apply the same principle for realizing a multiplier where you basically replace these AND gates by corresponding multipliers. So, you can observe that you know like the cost of getting this security is significant because in order to realize one AND gate, now you have got four AND gates and you have got four exhorts. Okay. So therefore, there is a significant blow up in terms of chip area and uh, other peripheral costs. Okay, but at the same time, right, it is, this is essentially sound in terms of uh, DPL leakage. So now we will see, uh, you know, like that whether that's the end of the story or there are more things to be considered. Okay. So so therefore, right, I mean, uh, we will basically consider masking and first order analysis. And here is a very uh, interesting way of observing uh, or taking a relook at masking. Okay. So in this masking designs, what we have done basically is that the intermediate variable x is split into two random variables x1 and x2 such that x1 zor of x2 is equal to x. Okay. And assume that again if I you know like assume that the leakage is kind of modeled by the Hamming weight of x1 and x2. Note that now you are not storing x in a register, but the registers are storing x1 and x2 like the shares of x. Okay. So, x has been broken up into x1 and x2 like we have broken up a into am and ma. Okay. So, there are two parts that you have broken up them, broken them up into and therefore, the power consumption will essentially depend upon the Hamming weight of both x1 and x2. Okay. So, if you just make a simplistic model like that and try to observe how essentially is the leakage. So, you can see that here this diagram shows or this table shows that my input is say x which is 0 or 1. If I break it up, if I write 0, right, then I would I can write the masks as either 0, 0 or 1, 1 because both of them exhort to 0. And likewise, right, I can write 1 as 0, 1 or 1, 0. Okay. 
So now observe what is the leakage because of this x. Okay, the leakage here is zero because the leakage for zero zero, so that is zero. The leakage for one and one should be maximum, that is two. Okay, the leakage here is zero one, which is one, and the leakage here is one zero, which is one. Okay, so now if you observe the mean leakage, the mean leakage, right? Essentially, so mean leakage means if I take the mean when the input is say zero, okay, the values here are uh, you know like zero and two. So if I take zero and two, the mean is one. Likewise, right here, if I take for the mean for you know the, the, the mean leakage for when the value is one, it is here one and one, so the mean is still one. Okay, so therefore, right from the first order point of view, like when we are just take doing first order, when we are applying first order statistics, okay, that is when you are computing the mean and doing your you know like DOM or correlation power attacks as we have seen, the mean is not leaking any information. Okay, and that is why right this is secured against uh, first order. Uh, you know, like or potentially secured against first order attacks. But if you observe the observe the variance, you will see that here the variance is significantly larger compared to here. The variance here is zero, where the variance is it is one. Okay, and therefore, right from the if I try to do a second order analysis, this will still reveal, and you know, like because of this dependence of variance on x. Okay, so this is important to keep in mind that masking, right, in as we have defined. Is essentially first order resistant, but not resistant against a second order analysis. Okay, and therefore, right, we can still <coughs> we would still like to improve the basic design if you want to protect against a higher order attack. Okay. So, so therefore, right, I mean, uh, this is uh, so therefore the whole idea is that uh, so let's see uh, how we can develop basic uh, the basic scheme. But before we go into that, right, uh, what we'll also try to see is what happens. Uh, you know, like. So, okay, so, so let us first of all define what is a higher order masking. Okay, so in a so therefore, right, we, we as we see that our design is not secured against second order attacks. So likewise, right, it is of course not secure against a third order attack, fourth order attack, and so on. So therefore, in if I generalize this in a dth order masking, what we will try to do is we will aim to randomize the intermediate sensitive data x by splitting into d plus one uniformly distributed variables. Okay, so like when we are protecting against first order attacks. We have broken up our input x into two parts. Okay, if I want to protect against a second order attack, we have to break it up into three parts: x1, x2, and x3, such that they zor up to get me x. Okay, so in a general like set, generic setting, right? If I have got say x1, x2, x3, and so on till xd and xd plus one, and I use some kind of operator to indicate how we are basically combine them. Note that the masking, right? Essentially, the, the way we have seen is that this operator is xor. And this particular way of doing masking is called as Boolean masking. Okay, as opposed to this, there is another alternative way of doing masking where I apply for this operator I apply a plus. Okay, so that is an integer addition, and that is called as additive masking. Okay, so each variable xi. So in this case, so you can apply both Boolean masking as well as additive masking. Okay, and each uh, and, and you can observe the way in which we obtain the shares is that if I want d plus one shares. I will randomly choose x1 to xd, okay, and then I will choose or calculate xd plus one. I will compute xd plus one so that this equation is satisfied, okay. And that you can easily verify that, for example, if this is xor, what I do is I, I I kind of randomly choose x1 to xd, and then I basically compute xd plus one so that their xor is equal to x, okay, which you can easily get by xoring x with the xor of x1 to xd, okay. So therefore, right, each variable xi is referred To as a secret share, and the secret sharing can be done by randomly generating x1 to xd and by computing the value of xd plus one. Okay, so so now uh, we would like to see that how we can really hide behind the mask. Okay, so given an input share, there are, I mean I mean you see how we can apply masking. So so two ciphers. Okay, so note that the ciphers can be typically having two types of transformations. It can have linear transformations or it can have non-linear transformations. Okay, for linear transformations, actually masking is very easy. So because of this simple fact that if I break up x into the shares like x1 to xd plus one, okay, then I know that by because of the fact that the linear L is linear, when I apply L of on x1 zor so on till xd plus one, that is equal to L of x1 zor of L of x2 zor of L of xd plus one. So therefore, right, we can perform the linear operations on the masks. Okay, so you can actually actually break when the moment you have broken up. The input x into parts. You can apply the linear transformations on each of these parts separately, and you know that when you combine these results, you are getting the correct output. Okay, 
So, there is no problem in that case. So, likewise, uh, but, but you know like when you apply the process for a nonlinear transformation, then the process is much more complex. Okay? For example, right when I want to compute say zx zor of xy, where xy as we know is a nonlinear computation. So, therefore, right one way of possibly potentially masking this is as shown here. So, I basically do z1 xor of x1 y1 and in the other share I basically calculate z2 zor x1 y2 zor of x2 y1 zor of x2 y2. Okay. So, note that you know like uh, in this case right when I combine f1 and f2 then because of the combination of z1 and z2 I get z okay. and x1 y1 x1 y2 if I combine right I get x1 into y1 zor y2 which is equal to y okay. zor of again x2 if I take common y1 zor y2 will be equal to uh, will be equal to uh, y. Okay. So, therefore, right if I take y common then I get x1 zor x2 which is equal to x therefore, I get xy. Okay. So, therefore, this is correct, but at the same time you should observe that the you should observe the parenthesis here. Okay. This is very important because if this, this ordering is not properly done then again x2 y1 will combine with x2 y2 which will lead to the leakage of the information on y and therefore, right I mean one should be very careful when you are applying you know like uh, uh, you know like associativity in this particular cases. Okay. So, for example, here what we will do is that we will kind of combine x1 y2 with an independent data z2 and then I will combine it with x2 y1 and then I will combine the result with x2 y1 which is essentially uh, you know trying to keep it in secure against a first order attack. But as we know that this is not secured against second order attack because the moment I combine the leakage of f1 and f2 then all my shares are leaked and therefore, the actual data is also compromised. Actually, this is not even first order attacks, okay, which is very unfortunate news. Okay. This is essentially not secured if there are something which are called as glitches inside a circuit. Okay. So, that essentially we will study up you know like uh, uh, in, 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 the, in the next class where we will see right what is the effect of glitches on these kind of circuits.